Grading can be one of the most stressful parts of taking a college course, but it really doesn't have to be. The key is remembering that grades are supposed to communicate information to you. Once you understand how that works and how you can use that information, the grading process can be pretty easy to navigate. So here's a couple of things to keep in mind about what grades are and how to use them. First, grades are supposed to be feedback that indicate your progress toward course learning goals and that give you credit for making progress toward those goals. Now what's a learning goal? A learning goal is the big picture vision, usually skills or knowledge, that a professor wants you to take away from a particular class. Sometimes these are really explicit on the syllabus, right under the title of the course, they'll list, here's our learning goals. In our particular class, we put our learning goals right on the course website under our policies and assignment section. Learning goals are things like, by the end of this course, you're gonna understand this portion of history or this philosophical school of thought. They might also be uh, skills, like you'll know how to argue better, something like that. So grades are a way of indicating the extent to which you've achieved a particular learning goal. So that's the sense in which grades are supposed to be feedback. They're also supposed to give you credit. So if you've worked really hard to comprehend the course material and to acquire the skills that you're learning, you deserve some credit. You should be sort of paid for your effort. Grades are a way of doing that. Now, to make sense of the particular feedback that you're receiving when you receive a grade, you've got to think about how the grade was assigned in the first place. In our course, and in many courses, professors, instructors will use what we call rubrics, which are a guide to distributing points for a particular assignment. Now, if you have the rubric, You'll look at the different sections of it, and it'll say, look, an excellent paper will have these features, and it'll list them. A good paper will have these features, and it'll list them. And then there'll be point values next to each of those features. One trick then, I guess a grading hack, is to look at the rubric before you even do the assignment. Because if you're writing an excellent paper, but you're not being graded along a certain dimension, you're gonna be wasting your time and effort. On the other hand, if you look at what's graded and you put all your time and effort into making sure that your paper contains those things, then you're gonna be more likely to receive full credit for the assignment. When you receive your grade back, one very helpful and informative way that you can start a conversation with your professor is to bring the rubric to them, bring the score to them, and ask them particular questions about why you lost points in a particular area. It might be obvious, and if it is, that's great. Then you have the feedback you know to improve your performance going forward in the course. But if you look at the score, you look at the rubric, and you're still kind of confused, using that as a guide, using that to start a conversation, can be an incredibly helpful way for you to improve in the future. Finally, how do you improve your grades? How do you sort of game the grading system? Well, I don't think you should think about it as gaming the system, but again, if you know how the points are gonna be distributed, if you know what the professor cares about, and if you know that the point, the ultimate point of taking the course in the first place is to acquire those learning goals or to achieve them, then you have a really good framework to use in distributing your effort and in making progress through the course. I think there's a couple of different goals you might have in a particular course. Maybe you just wanna receive an A, which is totally fine. The goal there uh, dictates that you should use the rubric to see where you're losing points. Make sure that you're maximally efficient in completing your assignments. If you make a mistake, go back to the rubric and say, okay, how can I not lose points on this particular skill or uh, piece of knowledge in the future? Your goal is broader, so of course you want a good grade, but maybe you also look at the learning goal and think like, that's really important for my life. I really need to you know, learn how to critically think so that uh, in my career I can make good arguments or something like that. I think you should still do the first thing, look at the rubric, think about where you lost points, but then think about uh, the grade, the information, in a broader way. Let me give you a quick analogy. I go to a gym and I have a personal trainer. The personal trainer will test me every couple of days. He'll say, okay, go lift that bar 10 times, see if you can do it. If I can do it nine times but not 10 times, he'll, he'll keep track of the weight and he'll say, okay, next time we're gonna do a little less weight, a little more weight, okay. So here's the idea. One of my goals in going to the gym is not just to be able to lift a certain amount of weight, just to like sort of measure, you know, uh, 150 pounds, whatever it might be, uh, but to sort of become healthier and fitter as a person. And so one thing I have to do is constantly zoom back and just think, what do these measures, what are these numbers, the amount of weight I can carry or something like that, what do they indicate about my health? And using that broader framework really helps me put the metrics 
the assessment, the indicators into a broader context.